For a gas, temperature and pressure are directly proportional. When you keep everything else constant, as the temperature of a gas goes up, its pressure goes up. As the temperature of a gas goes down, its pressure goes down. If you heat up a gas, the gas particles move faster. If the gas is in a solid container with fixed volume, this means that the faster the gas particles move, the more times per second they collide with the sides of the container. That registers as increased pressure. The converse is also true. If you cool down this container of gas, that means the gas particles are moving more slowly. So there will be fewer collisions with the sides of the container per second, which means lower pressure. Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac shares credit with Guillaume Amontan for establishing a gas law describing the relationship between temperature and pressure. Gay-Lussac's law says that when the volume and amount of gas is constant, pressure and temperature are directly proportional. P is proportional to T. You can write this mathematically as P equals KT, where P equals pressure, T equals temperature in Kelvin, and K is a proportionality constant. We can rearrange this equation so it reads P over T equals K, or the ratio of pressure to temperature is a constant, K. Very often, Gay-Lussac's law is used to compare two situations, a before and an after. In that case, you can say P1 over T1 equals K, and P2 over T2 equals K. So you can write Gay-Lussac's law as P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Let's see an example. A canister of nitrogen gas has a pressure of 2,000 psi, pounds per square inch, at 20 degrees Celsius. What will the pressure be if you increase the temperature to 25 degrees Celsius? Let's write down Gay-Lussac's law, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, because we have a before and after. Remember to convert the temperatures to Kelvin. Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So T1 equals 293.15 Kelvin, and T2 equals 298.15 Kelvin. Substitute in what we know. 2,000 psi over 293.15 Kelvin equals P2 over 298.15 Kelvin. Solve for P2. Multiply both sides by 298.15. P2 equals 2,000 psi times 298.15 Kelvin divided by 293.15 Kelvin. P2 equals 2,034 psi. Here's another example. At 10 degrees Celsius, a gas exerts 0.95 atmospheres of pressure. At what temperature in Celsius will it exert a pressure of 0.75 atmospheres? P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Remember, we have to convert temperatures to Kelvin. Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So T1 equals 283.15 Kelvin. 0 0.95 atmospheres divided by 283.15 Kelvin equals 0 0.75 atmospheres divided by T2. Solve for T2. T2 equals 283.15 Kelvin times 0 0.75 atmospheres divided by 0 0.95 atmospheres equals 223.54 Kelvin. We're not done yet. Remember, we have to convert our temperature back to Celsius. 223.54 Kelvin minus 273.15 equals negative 49.6 degrees Celsius. Gay-Lussac's law relates temperature and pressure for a gas. But there are other gas laws which relate the other essential variables associated with a gas. Charles' law is the relationship between temperature and volume. Boyle's law is the relationship between pressure and volume. And the combined gas law puts all three together, temperature, pressure, and volume. Notice that to use any of these laws, the amount of gas must be constant. Avogadro's law describes the relationship between volume and the amount of a gas, 
usually in terms of n, the number of moles. When we combine all four laws, we get the ideal gas law. To decide which of these gas laws you need to use when solving a problem, make a list of what information you have and what information you need. If a variable doesn't come up or is held constant in the problem, you don't need it in your equation. <laughs>